Charbonnet, and welcome to The Writer's Dream, a show that features authors and their unique experiences with writing, marketing, and promoting their books. And today we're here to welcome Vito Gentili. He's the author of Little Christmas and 50 Poems About Christmas. And he also is a screenwriter and a teleplay writer. He's going to share his, his experiences with us today. So welcome. Thank you. And uh, Vito, <clears throat> can you tell us first a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and how that influenced your writing? Because I know you, uh, that did help in your writing your books. Yes. Um, I was born in Brooklyn. I suppose you could tell that with my accent. <laughs> and um, in fact, according to legend, I delivered myself. So that I was very impetuous. Welcome and to uh, uh, I studied in Brooklyn. And, and then, for some magical way, I spent um, 15 years of my life in London, which was oh. quite wonderful. And then um, out here in East Quag, which is a great place to be. Yes. Uh, you know, to live out in the Hamptons. Uh, as far as my writing, I've written all my life. Um, kept it quiet most of my life because I have dyslexia. And uh, when you can't spell, you can't show someone what you wrote. Mm -hmm. You can't have a regular education. So in grade school, uh, Catholic grade school, they said it was sloth, one of the right. seven deadly sins. So the only way you cure that is, say, with a, a bamboo switch. Mm -hmm. And in high school, they had a better word for it in public. They called it juvenile delinquency. Mm -hmm. And they put me in remedial reading, where, which was basically a class for kids to, to fist fight and shoot each other. A boy was shot right in front of me and oh. while we waited for the, the bell to ring. And, and yet, back then, compared to what happens today, when everybody makes a big fuss out of it, they said, OK, you know, just you know, nothing was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we move on. So. Um, there's good things that come from all that, mm -hmm. because I worked in the school library and um, in high school, and I managed to read all of Shakespeare on my own. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of the names was difficult, like Coleonis, mm -hmm. uh, Coleonis, or whatever it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Why you would ever give a kid a good name like that is beyond me. But <laughs> so I made up my own names for the characters in the plays. And unbeknownst to me, I was training myself to be a writer because I was looking at the structure of, of the, the Shakespeare's plays and nobody was telling me what the insights or the subtext was. So I came up with my own ideas. Um, another thing that happened as a child, um, I had an accident and had my tongue injured and I wasn't to speak. They said I would be tongue tied. And um, I li against all doctor's um, thoughts. I, uh, I listened to people speak on trolley cars in, in buses and trains on the street. And I practiced what they said and how they said it. And it gave me a great ear for dialogue, which I thank God for. So, for, yes, you know, so, yeah. so things come to you that you don't, you really don't, um, you don't know that they, they look like they're going to be bad. I mean, before the accident, they said I was the, the kid who was vaccinated with a Victrola needle. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they said he can't talk anymore. Yeah. They were but you wrong. Look at you, you uh, <laughs> show that they were wrong, and you were motivated, and you persevered. That's yes, and to, and, to, and to learn to have a Brooklyn accent phonetically is and very you difficult. You don't sound like you have a Brooklyn accent anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, the, you know, and the third thing happened, uh, all at the same time. In 1949, I saw an angel. <laughs> which scared the hell out of me. And, uh, <laughs> but that was the motivating factor for you yes. to write your book. Yes. Well, the second which, angel which that I saw years later, but mm -hmm. I was prepared for it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't believe I saw one, but I did. Mm -hmm. And so many wonderful things have happened in my life mm -hmm. that I have to think back that somehow it had to be involved in that. Yeah. Because, I mean, I wouldn't even be sitting here talking to you. I mean, right. well, well, I had all the, all the chips the against me. The inspiration for you. you know, so all this stuff <clears throat> made me a better person. And, uh, yeah. And so when was that when you wrote the book? After, after you saw the angel and then you decided you were going to write the book, the first book? In, in, um, in, in 2003, I went to church on Little Christmas, the Feast of the Epiphany, mm -hmm. as I always did. And I went up to the... Uh, the wise men, because they put them now in the stable and they're mm -hmm. holding the gold and frankincense and myrrh. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I could use a gift, like a producer or a director, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And, uh, and I walked to the back of the church 
and there was an old Christmas tree, you know, just ready, you know, the mm -hmm. Christmas trees are uh, wilting at that point, but they right. look so beautiful. Yeah. And a woman came up to me with this taller than me, with porcelain white skin and a mandarin collar on a black coat all the way to the floor. And she said, mm -hmm. if I give you a gift, mm -hmm. would you take it? I said, are you crazy? It's Christmas, little Christmas. I just asked the wise man, of course I'll take it. <laughs> and, and so went the story. And I said, but wait a minute, what is your name? And she said, Angela. And I took the gift, which mm -hmm. is in the book, and I went to the park, and I sat on, on the park bench, um, and somehow my whole childhood, everything came back to me. <clears throat> a leaf fell from a tree and stood up on its stem and danced. Mm -hmm. That leaf hangs in my office at home. Uh, a swan walked alongside of me along a... a um, a canal mm -hmm. for about a half a mile. Mm -hmm. So many crazy things, but the stories of my childhood that right. came so out. The stories came out of those. Every, but they were so crystal clear. So the next morning, I wrote them down. But then mm -hmm. I wouldn't show anyone. I said they'll think I'm crazy. And that you know, was the poetry book, or this no, was no, that, that was the little Christmas. Little Christmas book. And then in 2007, I I gave copies, had copies printed, and gave it to my family just to see what mm -hmm. they would think. And mm -hmm. I thought they'd say I was crazy. But they all loved it. But I still was afraid to show it to people. Mm -hmm. And I put it away again until now. But you have written a lot of poetry when you were young. Yes. I've been writing poetry all my life and Christmas poems uh, for the last 50 years. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and so I've put a collection of all my poems and going through them all because sometimes I write five Christmas poems in a year. I mean, I love Christmas. I wrote. Yeah. A, a, a musical called Guests at the Stables from the animal's point of view. It was, was some of your memories when you were a youngster in Brooklyn. Yes, I, uh, I read that you inspired you to write the, this first book, the Little Christmas, also. Yes, yes. Well, the, my, my, my childhood yeah. was just, I had such wonderful parents. Our house was the center of the whole neighborhood. No mm -hmm. one came at Christmas without leaving with a gift. Yeah. Every, I mean, everyone. And all those people bought copies of this book, and they're all... Oh. calling and writing and saying, yes, that's they the way it was. That. And yeah. they're not family, they're friends. And mm -hmm. they remember coming to us and they all wrote stories about watching my mother cook and watching yeah. the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm so glad because it's, it's not just about me, it's about a way of life that maybe is no longer there, but it was a wonderful <clears throat> experience. It sounds like it was. So tell me, um, <clears throat> let's see, how about how writing this book impacted your life? You already, you already told us something, but how has it truly impacted your life, well, writing your books? Well, again, back to the dyslexia. I was always afraid to show someone anything that I had on paper. Mm -hmm. and, and it has impacted my life incredibly. Because when you write plays and you write screenplays and everything, and if they're not produced, they're like still birds. Mm -hmm. But a book, once it's in, in, in hard form where people can easily read it, right. you feel your child has life. <clears throat> and if people bought the books or didn't, which they did, uh, it's just an incredible accomplishment. The yes, second is. thing is I yeah. got over a, a, a hurdle. I would never oh. like to show any, yeah. but on, anything yeah. on paper. Right. When uh, one of my plays was published, uh, Miss the Gladiolas, I went, walked by a bookstore, yeah. and it was, the window was filled with my books, my yeah. play, and I got sick thinking they're looking at the commas. They are not there. They're Just looking at the, at the, play. the spelling errors. How they're did look... you get into uh, screenplay writing? Now, that's something, to, and teleplay writing. And uh, are, they, are they different? Oh, they're all different. Very different yeah. type of writing. The, I went to take a class at NYU. According to some of my neighbors said, go take a class because you, you want to be a poet. And I gave the teacher a poem I wrote, which had six voices in it. It was mm -hmm. called In Search of the Good Samaritan, about a man who fell in the street. Mm -hmm. They thought it was a drunk, but he actually was having a heart attack. And the next week when I went back to class, he, to my surprise, he read a piece of my, my poem mm -hmm. and then took me by the hand across the hall to a playwriting teacher. And he said his words should be said and not read. Mm -hmm. Or oh. was it the opposite? They should be yeah, should uh, read, said and not read. Mm -hmm. And she said to me very... Well, my class is already, already in, and I don't know if you could be able to do anything, but could you come back next week and give me three pages of dialogue? Do you know what dialogue is? And I mm -hmm. said, yes, I do. But I brought her back a three-page play mm -hmm. 
about a woman making supper and a husband on a bad hair day and a husband having a bad day at the office and she stabs him with the, the, the silverware mm -hmm. and everybody applauded and I was a writer. <laughs> uh, while in that class, I started to write a play, which was eventually one of my first plays produced, putting them to pasture. And a friend took it to his office to type it up mm -hmm. for me to check my spelling. And a woman, an actress, was visiting the office. Mm -hmm. She looked over his shoulder and said, I, I like that. Those jokes are funny. This, mm -hmm. Can I show that to my agent? So oh. with not even a you month right of, the right of playwriting uh, class, mm -hmm. I already had an agent. That's wonderful. I know. It, it, it happened so fast. Yes. And I was writing plays. I was working in television. I mean. So obviously, you had talent, but you also had a bit of luck there, too. It's all <laughs> luck. To me, yeah. luck is like a black hole. Mm -hmm. It takes you from A, Zoom, to B, C, yeah. or D without going to a lot of stuff. But luck opens doors. Right. But getting, you have to have talent to stay in there and, right. and do what you have to do. And being in the right place at the right yeah. time, like you are. Yeah. So um, what works have you written in, uh, as far as um, the screenplay writing? What, what kind of uh, well, I worked, plays have you I written? Well, my screenwriting really came uh, while I was in London. In the, and back in, in, uh, in the early 80s, I wrote a, a, the script for a 10-minute movie with 50 speaking parts that won awards in New York, in Paris, in uh, Prague, and other places and, it was on, on HBO and mm -hmm. all with 50 people speaking in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And how can you do that? Well, if you come from a big Italian family, <laughs> you know how voices, yes. how people can speak on top of each yeah. other and everything could come, come, come through. Come through. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was wonderful, a wonderful experience. And uh, as I was doing my plays, I started to get calls from a lot of different people asking me, would I come in to, you know, to the different networks and, um, and help them develop characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was doing stuff like that. And, uh, and I was writing plays, and they were being produced. How, and how, what, what period of time was that? How long did that? It seems like it happened so quickly. It happened, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, between 1975 and 1985. Mm -hmm. I had written maybe uh, 15, 16 plays. I had written all uh, hundreds of poems. I had mm -hmm. written articles wow. for, for, for things. I had worked I, again on, on Broadway as a script as mm -hmm. a as a script doctor. I had worked in television designing characters. Mm -hmm. Things believe this. This is crazy. One night, I was invited to dinner with the whole Islanders team and mm -hmm. all the everybody, and to a restaurant which was filled with all uh, ice hockey memorabilia, mm -hmm. and I, to write the life story of the whole team. And they and I was sitting there like I don't know anything about hockey. And they right. said, that's where we want to pick you. We like you for your sense of humor and everything. Right. And then they said, well, we're going to take you to Canada. And you're going to spend a week with him, him. And him, you'll him. learn it pretty quick. <laughs> and I went, Canada, snow. I'm so did you, do, did you no, do it? I didn't, oh, you do, didn't do it. I didn't do it because uh, you have to know what you really, what you really can do topics. and what you can't. Mm -hmm. I, I studied with Ed Bullens, uh, who was known as the Black Shakespeare at the at at the public theater. He's a wonderful, wonderful writer. Mm -hmm. And he taught me that there are things called trunk plays, mm -hmm. meaning that you have a great idea, great characters, great everything, but you don't have the ability to make it work properly. Okay. So put it away for as long as it takes mm -hmm. until you get to that point. But don't ruin mm -hmm. what could be a wonderful work of art by forcing yourself to, to do, do it. Something that so, I never forgot that. And sometimes things come to you and you say, okay, I can make money, this, I could fudge it. I, you right. can't fudge it. You have, you know, you you have, have to be able to do it. Yeah. Did you take courses on screenwriting or screenplay writing or you didn't, this just came naturally to you? Well, I, I, I took the writing courses at NYU, but mm -hmm. then I went out to take courses at various places like the Public Theater with Ed mm -hmm. Bullens. I took a course at the Television Academy. Okay. But my fondest memories mm -hmm. there was being in the office and yeah. putting up all the Emmy Awards and seeing how many I could hold <laughs> and make an acceptance <laughs> speech. So, but, but there, sometimes, who you're there to see is, or being taught by mm -hmm. is not as important who you're sitting with. Uh, there was a man who wrote, who was taking courses to write for TV, who wrote pornography mm -hmm. as a living. Mm -hmm. 
the things he told me about construction have stayed with me all my life. Construction of a of, set? Of, of, of how he wrote those books. Oh, of how that there was a formula for it. And it was so incredible how you set the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. And what I learned from him, because right. I don't write pornography, uh -huh. but what I learned from him about construction mm -hmm. has lasted me my whole life. When I'm writing, I always mm -hmm. remember him. And I say, think mm -hmm. back about what he said, how you set up your your you know, your subtext and all the right. same, but there was a formula. And children. so he was more important than, the, than the, the professor teaching. Okay, so he was invaluable to you. Yes, to me. Oh, That's yes. Great. I don't know where he is or if he <laughs> ever became a TV writer. Yeah. But. People are coming to your life for a reason. I guess that was a, a good reason that you met him. I believe you have to meet a lot of people mm -hmm. and you have to weigh what what, what you can learn from them. And right. I have I, I agree. hundreds of people that I, I am indebted to for just their, their kindness and their, their openness to, 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 to tell me things that, that were important to, for my career. Right. So now um, let's continue talking about the writing process. Uh, tell me, what was your favorite part of the writing process? The character. When a character, when a character wakes me up, it's... Um, it's incredible, and I try to stay away from them. Leave me alone. You know, I have so many other things I'm working on them, but the character keeps gnawing at you and gnawing right. at you, and then you say, okay, you sit down, and you say, tell me about yourself. Tell me your story, and if they're real, and if they're organic, and they're not, you know, from some formula that you're right. thinking of, they will tell you the whole story. Because you want your readers to connect with yes, them. Yes, because the character, and if, if you have a wonderful character, then you know there's another character that's going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, if they're the, an the protagonist, there's going to be an antagonist. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't right. always have to be that. I should tell you, I don't believe everything is one in ten. Right. You know, everybody is good and evil. It doesn't work that way. And I don't believe a protagonist has to be uh, a person. I mean, my... my, my it, could be, it could be an animal. Well, <laughs> I have a leaf. Yeah. My, I won an award for a play called, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind right now, uh, A Leaf for All Seasons. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, there's a leaf in a tree. And he wants to become a human being because humans have affections. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they speak uh, Russell mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. and, but I wrote a play uh, where the protagonist was a way of life. And my teacher at that time said to me, you can't do that. It has to be a person. I said, no, you're wrong. I think you're, you are right. Yeah. yeah. And then in the classroom was another woman. Mm -hmm. And she said, he's right. And you, she mm -hmm. has nothing else to teach you. And yeah. when I came, she didn't have she imagination. Said, and she said, let's leave. Yeah. So we walked down the street. I said, what yeah. do I do? She said, me and my husband will produce your play. Boom. That's a great. Yeah. Person. And that play, she didn't produce that play. She produced because it wasn't even started to write. But that mm -hmm. play amidst the gladiolas, was such a critical success, right. I got a job teaching it and where you're oh, from, from that play that. because they yeah. came to see it. Oh, that's great. Luck again. Yeah, luck again. <laughs> yeah, being in the right place at the right yeah. time. So did you have uh, anything uh, when you wrote that was challenging for you? Was there a challenging part of the writing process for you? Uh, challenging. Um, I, I think, you know, it's a, first of all, it's a two-pronged Thing. First, you write. You know, you go to write the outline, your mm -hmm. your your breakdown. Then you then the script. And the first time around with the script, is the poet writes, mm -hmm. and then the poet has to walk away, you yeah. know, and say to the technician, mm -hmm. get out your scissor, mm -hmm. and start asking some serious questions to make it work, and then so you go through that, mm -hmm. and that that is challenging because you have to put your ego aside you know, and say all the wonderful prose. Mm -hmm. You know, I save all my drafts because I always say this could be this great museum someday and they're going to say, this is how it mm -hmm. looked. I would love to see my first draft and my right. last draft right. on, the on the stage at the same time. Mm -hmm. to show Because you give up a lot of that, that one wonderful nuance to yes. put in things that actually make the play work. So you have right. to be a technician mm -hmm. and, you, and you have, so that I find is the, the most challenging thing okay. to, to put yourself out of the picture and say, no, this is what you have to do. Right. I know for me it was character development and making them have their own voice. The voice. Their See, own separate voice and personality. That to me was a little 
I thought I had it, and then I wanted, I, I knew that it needed more. I'm glad you so. mentioned voice, because when you write plays or screenplays, the actor and actress, and also teleplays, mm -hmm. the actor and actress puts their own voice. They switch it around this right. way. They'll even change your lines just to make sure they get their own voice. Right. But in writing, it is your voice. And one of the things about writing Little Christmas, mm -hmm. I was so afraid, did I have a voice? You know, and people said it was wonderful how it, mm -hmm. that, that I had an actual writing voice because you don't hear that on the stage. You know, mm -hmm. everybody suits it to their own thing. So this right. was a revelation. But you're right, right. the voice. Do you have, does your voice, character have a voice, and is it something that people want to identify with? Right, it's so it does, important. The, the universal yeah. qualities. You want the, the reader to have an emotional uh, attraction to your, to your character, even if it's a, the, one of the protagonists is a, a villain, say. Yes. You, you don't want to like that villain, you know? Well, or, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, so you want the reader to have some kind of emotional feeling. Sunset Boulevard. Yes. I mean, uh, Norma Desmond is the, anta is the, is the antagonist. Mm -hmm. And and yet, that's who we watch. Dracula. I mean, the, these are these are wonderful. Right. That's right. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, who wants to look at Van Helsing? He's so depressing. But Dracula <laughs> with the cape, the this, yeah, the, you yeah. Know, so it's incredible. Something you don't forget. <laughs> that's right. So, okay, did you ever? Um, uh, I know you got ideas at random times, but I can already, I've already listened to you, and I know that they just popped into your head. But how about writer's block? Did you get writer's block at any time when you were writing? No. Very, that's great. No, I, uh, I have right now, I would say, if I never came up with a new, new idea, I have at least 25 outlines for scripts mm -hmm. at home, and I have a whole bushel uh, or folder of, um, mm -hmm. of, of titles. Mm -hmm. I love coming up with titles, and yeah. titles sometimes make you write, write, a, write a play or something. You look at the title and say, what are you, what are you, what are you? Are you a play? Are you a movie? Are you a poem? What right. the heck are you? Right. And yeah. you go f do that. So, yeah, yeah I, I haven't had it yet. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say I did give it all up for 10 years. Oh, you did? Yes, yeah. in 85, I was just so being pulled in so many directions. Mm -hmm. I feel, I felt that. Well, you also had a job. You had a yes. job, Well, job. One, by then I was mm -hmm. working, um, I was working, full-time writing, mm -hmm. but I just felt it was pulling me in too many directions, and I walked away. I right. went back to Wall Street, where I started as a boy, and, right. uh, and it was, you know, it was um, whatever people want to say about Wall Street and the finance, mm -hmm. uh, the people behave better than they do in the theater. Oh, really? <laughs> all these all the emotions. Yes, the I know. And, uh, theatrical. And uh, so Things are coming I up. went back, and then in, in, in 98, I got a call from a producer in London, and he said, um, Vito, it's time you became famous. Come here. I have an idea. <laughs> and I went to London. Of course, I was living mm -hmm. uh, in London with Peter mm -hmm. in New York, but I wasn't in staying in London. All this. And I went to London, and uh, it put tears in my eyes because mm -hmm. I thought about what, you know, I gave it all up, and yet it came back full circle looking for me. Yes. But this time around... Mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't going to, you know, just get so so involved that I had no time for a private life, right. no time for, you right. know, so. Did you, when you were there, and did you, how about marketing, promoting your, your, your works? Did you manage to market and promote your works? How do you do it now, and did you do it while you were there as well? Actually, that's one of my, my, my bad, my bad uh, things. I love writing, mm -hmm. and I think... Uh, Maybe long after I'm dead, maybe they'll be doing my stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the process of writing. I find when, when you have put that third hat on, which is to mm -hmm. sell, it's very hard to, to want to uh, sell uh, your work. Right now, I'm working on uh, a musical yeah. with uh, John Lund, who wrote the, the score for Downton mm -hmm. Abbey. And it's, called, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a modern Gothic thriller. Mm -hmm. And that was one when I was telling you about Ed Bullens with the... Uh, right the uh, trunk plays. Right. I wrote the, the outline and, and breakdown and all the characters in 19, 1985. And every year I would look at it and say, you just don't work, you just don't work. And we went over mm -hmm. 20 years mm -hmm. before it, I realized I was ready to, to work on it. Right. So, right. but uh, yes, I have to get back to, to, to selling. Do you, not, do, you uh, do talks anywhere? Maybe 
any no, kind of talks? No, I only did, the first time I ever spoke um, was at uh, the Quag Library at Christmas. In fact, that's the reason the books came out, mm -hmm. because Kathleen Johnson at the library, I went with my partner Peter to uh, uh, see a lecture there, and she said, Vito, when am I going to see some of those Christmas poems? Mm -hmm. Better yet, why don't you come here and... Uh, and do a poetry reading at Christmas. And I thought, yeah. I've never read poetry aloud. Yeah. And she said, and better yet, uh, bring your books. Right. And I went home and I said, oh, God, um, something has happened here, and I have to step up to the plate. And that's when the books, that's when I decided to write the two books. And that was really, you yeah. know, to, to bring them out in public. I re it was just because... She said that. See, sometimes right. luck comes, and then what are you going to do with it? You know, what are you going to do? It's on the menu. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right. Because I know it's very, very hard. That's probably the hardest thing to do is promote your books. It takes a lot of time, and yeah. you sound like you're busy with your writing. And do you have other works on the horizon that you can yes. share with us? Well, uh, one we have is the uh, the uh, guest. Uh, uh, the I'm sorry to say um, the we ghost about, we on have like about a minute left. The, yeah. The, the, the Ghost on St. Martin Street. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and another one is a book called um, Meatballs and Stickballs, oh. which has some of my stories in it. It's 40 writers, uh, an anthology of Italian Americans mm -hmm. uh, oh. writing, and all of the history of Italian Americans in America. So anyone who wants to write that, and it's all the money is going to charity. Oh, you know, that's to wonderful. help children. What yeah, charity? So, is it? uh, it's it's a it's a, a school at Old St. Patrick's Church in 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 uh, Little Italy. Oh, very and nice. And it's a it's a program. St. Patrick's. I think, yes, okay. I think mm -hmm. sports uh, uh, things for children. Mm -hmm. I I also was thinking of following uh, this up with fifty poems about spring, but I thought I should wait a year. It, it sounds wonderful, and we're going to have to wrap things up. And okay. it was wonderful to talk to you and. And I wish you lots of luck in the thank future. Thank you for having me. And here. thank you, thank you thank again you. for being here. Thank you.